made something. They had Aaron make them something. The golden calf. That's right. And was God happy about this? No. Was Moses happy about it? No. What did Moses do to them? Okay. What else? Did, what did he do to the Israelites in the gold with the golden calf? Yeah, he, 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 they melted it down and ground it up into fine dust, and then the Israelites had to drink it. So, does God like for you to disobey him? No. No, we're going to talk about another time. There was, uh, the Israelites chose to disobey God. Well, really, it was kind of two guys. One of them's name was Nadab. Can you say Nadab? Nadab. Say it one more time. Who? Nadab, and there was, he, he had a brother. His name was Abihu. Can you say Abihu? Abihu. Now, do y'all have any friends at school with those names? No. no. You do? You have a friend named Nadab and Abihu? Yeah. Well, they had their daddy. You might know him. His name was Aaron. And who was Aaron? One who well, he was one of them at help. Moses' brother, that's how he ties into all this. He was Moses' brother. Well, they had made, they had, they had put them in a position uh, to be over the Israelites. Well, one day they decided they were going to grab a profane fire. Now, not a propane fire, not a propane, that's like gas. A profane fire is a fire that God said, you're not supposed to use that. He had given them fire to do their sacrifices with. But you know what they used? Just one of them they started on their own. They had grabbed it and they had used their own fire. They were going to try to do things their own way. Now, do you think God appreciated that? Well, what about if they were saying, I'm doing this for you, God? Does that make it okay? No. We still, when God says, I want you to do this this way, how do we do it? That way. That way. He gave you directions. He told you how to do it. And so what do you think happened? He, they killed him. he killed him. Well, let's just sum it up. Yeah, he killed him. Do you, do, do you think that that was a, a good thing for them to do? No. No, it wasn't. So, so God, does God uh, allow you to do bad things even if you try to do, even if you mean it for good? Does he get happy with that? Well, no, uh -uh. he's giving us direction. What about, what about if... Uh, what about if we, we, try to, we try to do something that, like our parents tell us not to do? Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Why? Because is that one of the commandments? Yeah. Yeah, honor your father and mother. So when, when God has given us uh, commandments and he's given us directions to go, that's what we're supposed to follow, right? Yeah. Even, what if, what if one of your friends says, well, I think this way is better. Are you supposed to do it that way? No. Uh -uh. So he, he gets all of this going and, and, fi and they find out, hey, we're not supposed to, uh, we're supposed to do things God's way. And he gives them all through Leviticus, all through Numbers, he gives them distinct rules for them to live by. Things to eat, things not to eat, things to, to avoid, things that will kill them, things that will glorify them, things that will make them better, how to treat your brother, how to treat your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, your mama, your daddy, your children. He tells them how to, how to live in all aspects of life. Now, why does God do that? Well, number one, he, who's in control? God. Even if you try to say, well, I'm just going to obey his rule, I'm just going to do it my way. That doesn't work, does it? We're going to do it his way or there's no other way. Correct? Yes. So all throughout, he's given them all these directions, all of these things for them to live by. And where are they trying to go all along this way? Heaven. They're trying to go to heaven. But more importantly, and well, not more importantly, more specifically and timely for them, where are the Israelites wandering in? They're wandering where? In the wilderness. In the wilderness. And they're wandering in the wilderness trying to get to what place physically? 
The promised land. Okay, so that was the land for them. Well, it comes to pass that they are going to go and get right up against the, the promised land. And so they decide, hey, you know what we might need to go do? We might need to go look at it. So they decide they're going to go look at the promised land, and they're going to send some spies over to look at the promised land. Hmm? They're going to pick 12 spies. They're going to pick 12 spies, one from, from every tribe. Now, who are the tribes? Do you all remember that? The tribes are the... Who are those based off of? The tribe. We say the 12 tribes. The Israelites. The Israelites. Who, who, the 12 tribes of Israel. Who was Israel? Uh, well, no, it was a guy's name. A person's name. Who? No, it started with a J, though. I bet Ivy knows, Ivy knows it. She's, who? No, Joseph's daddy. Jacob. Joseph was one, Joseph was one of them. So, so when we talk about the, they're all descendants of Reuben and Joseph and uh, Dan and Asher and Benjamin, all, those, all their grandkids. When we talk about the 12 tribes, they belong to one of those 12 people. That was their great, 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 great granddaddy Judah. That's who that was. So that's how they figured out who the 12 tribes were. All right. How about some songs? Jesus, you want to start with Jesus Loves Me to get warmed up? <clears throat> All right. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The care of them, right? That was his covenant. He said, I will take care of you and if you follow my commandments I'll take care of you. You will be my people and I will watch over you. Now when they didn't do good and they did their own profane fire, he dealt with them, didn't he? He gave them punishment. They built the golden calf. He gave them punishment. But does that make God, is God not still good? Yeah, he's trying to make them holy and sanctified and set apart to be special. His special people. So God's still good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God can So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the valleys are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. For you. <coughs> this, get wrapped up, and get tied up, and get tangled up, but where? Yeah. Jesus. Okay. I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in God. I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. This the light of mine. I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in God. I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Good job. All right, Sam, will you lead us in prayer?
Our next song will be number 66. 66. We are glad that you are all here uh, this evening, encouraged by your presence, and ask you all to sing out. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me to ask me no more heart, I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory.
after we sing this song, Brother Adam Nicholson will lead us in prayer. <coughs> Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for all the wonderful blessings you've given us. Father, we uh, are mindful of the sick of the congregation that we pray that you will put your healing hands on them and help them to get better at this, uh, at their wanted time. Father, we pray for uh, the Walker family as they lay to rest, Miss Doris Walker today, that you will be with them in a special way and that you will comfort them and help us to comfort them as well. Father, we pray that you will help us to uh, be Christians every single day instead of just days that uh, are on Sundays and Wednesdays. Father, we pray that you will help us to let our light shine in this dying world and uh, that we may be the only Bibles that the world may see. So please help us to study and to know what the truth is. Father, I pray that you will help us in our difficult times, that you will Help us to lean on you and to trust in your guidance and to have the faith that we would jump off a cliff if you told us to. Father, we know that that faith is hard to come by and we pray that you will grant us that faith, that, we will, that it will work in us and that we can do wonders to helping people come to you, Father. We pray that you will help us as we had just sang to Pray, uh, to pray to you and to also be patient for the answers that you give us because sometimes we want it now, but it's not best for us to have it now. And we pray that we will wait on your response and that we will be better having patience. Father, please be with the elders here as they shepherd the flock that they will do so in, the, in a pleasing manner in you, in your sight, and that they will do... Um, they will study the scriptures and they will do what's best for us. And we pray for Matt and Robert as they labor here with us that they will preach the truth and nothing but the truth. Forgive us of our sins, Father, and in your Son's most high and holy name we pray. Amen.
The Song of Invitation is number 272. If you're marking your song, but we are going to uh, go to John chapter 13. If you want to follow along in your Bible, we're glad that you all are here. And uh, this, this evening we had uh, the services for Sister Doris Walker and our hearts are aching and our prayers go with the Walker family uh, and the Loggins family during this time of loss. Uh, you know, we, there was a lot of stories shared and, and told in the, in the time of the funeral that were several were quite humorous, but all were very true. And uh, you know, we, ha- we have an impact on others here on this earth, and, and she was a great example of her far-reaching impact that she had, uh, especially in her love for God and, and the, uh, the way that she lived her life to show compassion to others and show love. In John chapter 13, Jesus uh, has washed the disciples' feet, uh, he has told them that one of you is going to betray me, and, and, and speaking about Judas. And then he goes on as, as he's beginning to speak to them more clearly about how heaven, what heaven is, about why he has come to this earth, and, and, and to speak more clearly, whereas he was speaking a lot of times about this temple is going to tear down, and I'm going to build it back up, and I'm going to go away, and I'm going to come back. And they were, the disciples were just as confused as they were before he started speaking, maybe even more so. Uh, And so he's going to start clarifying a few things to them. And and Peter is, you know, he is committed to saying, you know, all these other people are going to deny you. You aren't going to wash my feet. He had told Jesus, he said, well, no, I wash my head and everything. I'm not going to be the one that denies you. Uh, And here he is, and Jesus says, uh, says this in verse 31. Now is the Son of Man glorified. And God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me. And just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. Well, a new commandment I give to you. That you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Well, Simon, Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? You you said where you're going, I cannot go. Where are you going? Well, Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now. But you will follow afterwards. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Peter wants to know where you're going, Lord. I I, I want to go there with you. I will go anywhere with you. I will never deny you. I will never forsake you. I'm going to be there with you. If there's somewhere that you're going, I want to be there with you. I I hadn't followed you all these last few years for nothing to just give up now. I want to stick with you. I'm going to go with you all the way. I, I, will lay down my, I will lay down my life for you. I am committed to go with you. Well, Jesus' response in verse 38 says that, you know, he gives him the great prophecy about Peter. Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Jesus goes right into chapter 14. And he says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. He, he comforts his followers by encouraging them and telling them, you know, I'm, where I'm going, you can't go, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, you know, you can't go right now, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to bring you with me. Don't, don't let your hearts be troubled by all of this. Have comfort in knowing that I'm the, where I'm going, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And then he says in verse 4, and you know the way to where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except 
through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From, from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Well, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and, and it is enough. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long that you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And, the gra and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Well, keeping in context, context with our, the last few lessons that I've had with you, we're going to look at what he says in verse 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, he, he speaks these words and tells them, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Not because he needed to say it out loud, because obviously if they had had their eyes opened, they would be able to see him and the way that he's living, and they would be able to see the truth, they would be able to see life, they would be able to follow him in the way. But he says this to clarify something to Thomas, to whom I think had a very valid question for the time where he says, Lord, we don't even know where you're going. How, how can we know the way? You know, if, you, if, if, I, if, I tell, if I tell Ryan, I said, Ryan, I'm going somewhere, and I want you to go with me, what, what's the first reasonable question Ryan's going to have? Where are you going? Where are you going? Well, well Ryan, I, I can't really tell you where I'm going, but I, want, I know you know the way because you got MapQuest on your phone. Well, how, what, you got to put an end destination in there somewhere. Well, how is this all? You know, Thomas has got a pretty reasonable question. You know, if we really think about it, it's, it's how can you physically go with someone if you don't even know where they're going? And how are you going to know the way there if you don't even know where you're starting? Well, Jesus tells him, he says, well, I am the way. You want to know the way? I am the way. You know, and this is a thing that Jesus had been using since the very beginning of calling his disciples to him. In Matthew chapter 4, when he goes to Peter and Andrew and he says to them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You know, I know you're out here fishing in this water, but what I'm asking you is not so much to be a fisherman of men. It is not so much the fact that, you know, I, 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 want, to feed, I want you to follow me. That was the large request that Jesus gave to all of those he came in contact with. When, when, and, and Brother Robert brought up this morning about the, the selling of your riches. He said, sell all that you have and give to the poor, and then do what? Follow me. This was not anything new. This is not something that Jesus began just at this moment when Thomas asked this question. He said, I am the way. You, and to follow the way, you're going to have to follow him. And Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 while they're being questioned and, and they're being uh, written down here, Acts chapter 4, let me get my fingers working over here. Peter and John are taken in and, and, and they're going to go before the council in the Sanhedrin and they begin to ask them about who this is and, G, and Peter says this in Acts 14 verse 12, and there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. You want to know the way? The way goes by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, the Son of God. When you truly believe that He is who He says He is, when you see Him and you see the Father working in me, that's what, he, what He's going on and telling them. You've seen the Father work through me, and you saw the works that have been done by my hand. You know that I am from God, and I am the Father, and the Father in me. I am the way. I am the way to go. 
Number 761, uh, if you would sing with me, you, it's the song, Where He Leads, I'll Follow. If we're going to truly follow Him uh, and, and live by Him and know that He is the way, uh, in this song it has uh, the lyrics, you know, He is an example and a pattern for me. It, it tells us, Come to me, you weary and heavy laden, trust in His promises, faithful and sure. Uh, he is the great example, His tender love. Let's sing number 760. Sweet are the promises, kind is the word, dear Lord. says, I am the, the truth. I am the way, I am the truth. In Psalm 119, and verse 142, your righteousness is righteous forever, and your law is truth. When we talk about the law, he says, the law is truth. There is nothing truer than your words, O Lord. When God speaks, we can know and we can rest assured that that's the truth. That this is right and everything else is wrong. <coughs> We, we, we're not in a lot of way to sit here in gray area and debate about it. Once he has spoken, that's the truth. And, and that's the way things are supposed to be. And throughout this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus reminds them of the law. And he says, you know, I need, to, I need you to understand here is the law and here is the fulfillment of the truth. You know, you've been doing some of this within the law trying to be right, but your heart hadn't been in it and so you've really been wrong. He didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets or to, to shut any of that down, he tells them. He said, but I've come to fulfill, to make all of this even more true, to bring fullness to it, that, that all of everyone may be able to understand what the real truth is. In John 17, verse 17, while Jesus is praying, he says, sanctify them in the truth. And he begins the same thing and makes the same statement that your word is truth. When we think about the Word, and, and the Word being the truth, and the law being truth, it reminds me of John chapter 1, and, and, and the appearance of what the Word is, 
when the truth is revealed. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, it says in verse 1. And when we flash forward to, fast forward to verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen His glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and our Word, truth. When we think about what the Word is, and time and time again, the Word is truth. This is what's before you. And, and then in John, it makes this revelation, and, and Jesus has been saying it all along. He's been living it from the very beginning. He says, this is, I am the truth. I am the Word dwelling before you. He is full of grace. He is full of truth. That is where we are looking. He is truly the way. He is truly the way and He is the life. In John chapter 10 and verse 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I have come. In John chapter 10, if you think back to what that's talking about, it was when we were looking at Him being the shepherd and the good shepherd. He says, the, the thief comes in that he may destroy, the hiring flees, but I have come as the good shepherd that they may have life and they can have it abundantly. That they can, they can rest in the fact that I am their shepherd and that I take care of them. That they can have fullness in the fact that their life is, is taken care of because I'm their shepherd. It is only revealed to us that when he is talking about that kind of life, he's not just simply talking about being able to live here on this earth. He's not necessarily talking about prosperity and freedom from social or political downfalls. He's talking about eternal spiritual life. In verse 4 of John 1, going back there, in Him was life. And who was life? In the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. When we talk about this, he, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He shines and gives life because He is the light to the dark world. In John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. When Jesus talks about that He is the, the way, the truth, and the life, it's not this idea of this great life here on this earth, but it is rather a liberation from sin. The bondage of sin that holds each and every one of us down without Jesus' blood. It weighs us down and, and it rides upon our head and it is destruction. It is the way that leads to death. But here He is redeeming and buying us back from that way of life, releasing us from the bondage of sin, breaking the chains, releasing us from the handcuffs, opening up the bars of the jail and the prison of sin, and giving us the life, eternal life. In John chapter 14, Jesus was attempting to comfort and encourage His disciples. And he tells them, he says, I, I, where, I want you to follow me, but where I'm going, you can't go right now, and you, 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 have, to, you have to wait. I'm going to go, and I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I'm going to come back. Well, well how can we know all this? You know, here, here's Thomas, Philip, asking these questions. And he, what he's trying to say is, he's saying this, I am the only way to heaven. If you want to go before the Father, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to be before the Father, you're going to have to follow me. I'm the only way, this is the truth. I am the truth, and this is the only way to life. And it's only found in me. There's no other place. In verse 12 of John 14, it says, I am going to the Father. And where I'm going to the Father, I'm going to come back to you. It is much like common practice within the time frame and within the region. You see, this man would go and he would find himself a beautiful young lady and he would decide, this is whom I'm going to make my wife. I want to marry you. 
you are going to be my wife. And she's just all, she's excited. She finally found her a suitor. He said, well, all right, I got to go back. I got to go home. Well, what do you got to go home for? Well, I, I ain't got no place for us to live. <clears throat> and she said, well, that'd be a problem, you know. He said, but I'm going to come back. And so what he would do was he would go back home to the father and he would say, Daddy, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about building me a house right over here. Well, that's fine. Why don't you just add on to the house out back? You know, ain't no need in building all four. You just build off the back of the house. You won't have to build three walls and save you some money. You could be right here at home. He said, well, that's a fine idea, Daddy. So that's what they would do. And so the young man who's betrothed to this lady, here, here he is, he's got this fiancé back in this other land, in this other village, and he's working on the house, and he's trying to get the house ready and get it all prepped and fixed up. Why? Because he's going to bring home his bride to this place. And he would go, Daddy, I, I think I'm, I'm ready. We're, we're ready to have our, our marriage ceremony. I'm going to go get her. He said, well, you ain't done with the house yet. You still got a hole over there in that corner. You didn't fix it up. And then he said, well, you know, Daddy, you, you know, I'm ready to go get her now. I got that hole patched. He said, well, you ain't got no curtains, hung. Huh? You need to hang her up. She ain't going to be happy if she don't have curtains. And you best be figuring out what kind of curtains she likes in the meantime because if you hang up the wrong one, she will tell you. So he goes and gets some curtains and hangs it up. So all this time he is fixing up this house. He's fixing it up for his bride to bring home. And, and I think if we relate this back, here is Jesus who has gone home to the Father. And he says, in my Father's house there's, there are many mansions. There are many rooms. And here he is preparing this place for all of us. And no one knows when it's time for him to come back except for who? The Father. The father will say, it is now time, son, go get your bride, that is the church, and bring her home. Here we are, waiting on the groom to come back and get us, to take us home, to be with the father, and to live with him forever in heaven. And the only way to heaven, there's no alternate paths, if you put something in the GPS today and, and it goes, you know, there's road work up ahead. We found five other ways that have a similar arrival time. Which, which one would you like to... There's not, there's not a plan B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, double A all the way through the end. There's no other option. This is the only way. Are there going to be roadblocks? Yeah. Are there going to be people trying to get you to detour? Absolutely. But you have to stay the course. You have to stay the way. And no matter what anyone else may tell you, there is salvation and no other name but in the name of Jesus. And how do we follow Him to heaven? Well, the same way that He taught His disciples that they were to follow. He taught them this pattern. He taught them this plan. He, should, he lived as an example before them. You see, they heard His words and they believed them. They took His words that they believed and they truly believed it and they obeyed them. They followed Him. They obeyed everything that He had given them. They confessed that He was in fact Lord, the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth. He is the Son of God. There's no other Son of God that has come before us. He is the Messiah. They submitted to Him. They repented of their old way of life and said, you know, I don't need those vices. I don't need those things anymore. I'm going to give all that up. And they trusted that He was their atonement of sin. That He rose from the dead. Giving them new life. And they reflected those actions through baptism. Through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. So Jesus said, Ask them and told them, Do you not know the way? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And he is still today the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way to have the comfort of heaven than without him. And so if you're here this evening and you're not a child of God, we have laid before you all that you have to do. We've given you and by way of Jesus, all that is that will save you and give you a home in heaven with the Father. And having heard these words, if you truly believe them, you will confess that He is the Son of God. You're repenting of your old way of life and being baptized to a new life, living under His commands and obeying Him and telling others about who Jesus is. You too will find the way to heaven laid out before us by Jesus. If you're subject to the 
invitation in any way. We invite you to come as we stand and as we sing. I have decided to follow Are there any here this evening who are unable to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning? Please raise your hand. Okay. I want to thank you all for being here and singing out this evening. Uh, let us go into uh, the rest of this week by being who we ought to be, who Jesus has called us to be as we follow after him. Uh, we'll sing uh, the song, Blessed Be Your Name. I can remember it this time. I tried to lead it a couple of weeks ago, and my mind just went totally blank. Uh, we'll sing this. Uh, if you'd like to, may stand while we sing, and then Brother Steve Lovell will lead us in prayer, and we'll be dismissed. <clears throat> Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow.
be with the sick, be with uh, Cody Scott, just help him, Lord, in any way that you can. Be with his parents as they sit and, and wait and help comfort them. Be with the ones that's lost loved ones recently. Uh, continue to be with the Burble family and also the Walker family. Be with us now, Lord, if we depart. God, guard, direct us. Forgive us for our sins. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you.